Hi, good afternoon everyone. I hope you're all um, well and enjoying this lovely sunny weather that we're having at the moment, even if it's a little too hot. It's very, very hot. Today we're all sweltering. <laughs> but it's nice to have the sunshine. So, um, yeah, today our creative writing activity is called Schools Out. So lots and lots of schools have already broken up, lots of areas of the country. One or two still... Um, so at school maybe we're breaking up this week I think so I thought we'd focus on memories of schools as ever you can write memories or you can make up stories whatever you like so um, I chose schools because so, most of us have some memories of schooling of some sort and um, so much material that we can draw on so um, different age groups that we were in different schools um, uh, whether we liked school or we didn't, bits of it we may have liked, bits that we didn't. Um, you might be able to um, draw on really happy memories of school days, but be aware that some may be negative. And if you find that as you're writing, you're getting a little upset, have some self-care, stop. Remember, it's supposed to be a fun activity today. Um, as always, so pick out happy things to write about if you can. Um, but we'll do a quick warm-up. Oh, and don't forget, if you want to um, put comments in the chat box, here we go. Irene, good afternoon, Irene. I hope you enjoy enjoy what we're doing. Let's see, crack on. The team have said hello. Okay, so I thought we'd do one of our, our lists to start as a warm-up of lots of different activities. I'm going to write with you today. I may read bits of mine out. We'll see how we go for time. But again, don't forget to pop little little bits of what you're writing in the comments and at um, places where I can. I'll stop and read some of those out. Tell me how you're getting on. Um, yeah, I'm going to give seven minutes-ish and put my trusty timer on. I'm going to ask you to write a list of first thoughts, really, a quick write of on the topic of school days. So if you create a list of absolutely anything you want to about school um, just jottings, you don't need to do a fully formed piece unless you really want to. As I said, um, I said before, uh, people in my writing group don't want to do a list, they want to go straight into a story and that's entirely up to you. We'll have seven minutes and I'll shout when we're finishing. So if we be begin with the prompt school days, you could be writing a list of schools that you went to over your school career, teachers you've had, uh, the good ones and the bad ones and the ones in between. Um, dinner ladies is something I thought of earlier. Um, dinner ladies, there were kind dinner ladies who were helpful. There was always one who was a bit like a sergeant major. <laughs> List of dinner ladies. Um, the kind of things you would find in school, the style of classroom furniture, equipment you might have had, subjects you learnt, any routines that come to mind. Any uh, routines about the school year, but just quick jottings, don't overthink it. Jot down a list beginning with school days, and if you find yourself stuck, just write school days again and see if that prompts something else. Okay, so a list of categories, thoughts on school. I'm going to set the timer for seven minutes. Put myself, can I put myself on mute? Yes, I will put myself on mute. Seven minutes, off you go school days.
we've already begin, begun, Deb, if you want to get going now. So we, we're just writing a list of um, things we can remember about school days, just categories. Anything that you can remember. Um, sorry, yeah, anything. So a list of things to do with school days. It could be schools that you attended when you were young, or through your school life, teachers you've had, favourite subjects, school routines you can remember. Anything that when you say the word school days or my school days comes to mind, just jot it down. We'll be drawing from it in a bit. That's fine. You're welcome.
can I give you one more minute if you just want to finish off the little bit that you're on? Okay, we could probably have carried on for much longer doing that. But um, it's something you can return to at another time. I've, um, I do this quite often with my writing group. School's a topic that's um, um, just calls out to be remined over and over again. As I say, we, we each of us have... Um, so many different schools that we probably went to through the different age groups. That there's always some new story to 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 pull up. But I'll, I'll read my list. I concentrated on my first school that I went to when I was probably would have been a rising five in those days, so July birthday. So it was probably the term before July that I started. School days. Uh, so these memories are from that school, my infant school. Early starts for a child who took time to get going in the morning. A long walk up the hill on the way to school, a long but easier walk back down it coming home. Walking with my mum or big sister, running to school with brothers who never walked slowly enough. School dinner versus packed lunch. That was a whole topic area there. I was a very, very fussy child. And school dinners used to make me feel sick. <laughs> Loved English, hated maths. Kind Miss Hopkins, scary Mrs Hunt. The curly-haired teacher who made us clear our plates. And in those days, one teacher per dinner table. Teachers sat with us at lunchtime and made us eat. And the boy used to spit the water back into the glass. That's the thing that made me feel sick. <laughs> Kiss chase in the playground at playtime. Dick and Dora books read standing by the teacher's table. Big picture windows that let in loads of light. S um, square wooden tables sitting in groups of six. The top table up on a platform I got to sit on it once, but not for very long. My class teacher tripping over my chair leg. I was scared to death. Walking all the way home at lunchtime, but being tired and late back. It really was quite a long walk for a small child to make. No children wouldn't be allowed to do it now. PE in vest and pants. Crest seeds growing on the windowsill. So that's just seven minutes worth of ideas if you've got um your favorite one or two that you want to put in the comments box and i'll share them with people you might have chosen a different age group we could uh, we could do that again and move up an age group each time and pull forward memories from each age that we were educated at but i had there um page in a bit of ideas i could pull out and write a story about each one from memory of each one or use it as a poem. I could use that, knock it into a poem, tighten it up a little bit. Beginning with school days, my school days or something like that. So that was just a quick write, write to get our brains working, creaking on this hot day. And let's dive. Oh, so Vivian, Vivian Hall, being milk monitor. That was a big responsibility. I loved the daily milk. Many of you remember the milk in winter when it was frozen and the top used to pop. The um, the ice used to push the lid off of it. Oh, DT. Mr. Windgate throwing his chisels at Paul Foley. Foley? Hmm. Yes, I've heard stories like that. Again, they wouldn't be allowed to do it now. <laughs> Chisels, especially. Board rubbers. Board rubbers thrown at people. Thank you. 
Okay, so what have we got? We're quarter of an hour in. Activity one. So, I was thinking earlier as I was putting this together about books. I know there are so many books that um, have really good uh, stories of school days in. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure you'll all know lots and lots. If you can think of any, put them. Uh, if you think of any um, good books that are worth people reading, definitely put their their names in the comments. A couple that I was thinking of. I used to read um, a set of books called called Village Green by Miss Reed, and that was about a little village, um, the Cotswolds, I think, um, written from the point of view of the, the teacher and her the class that she taught. Lots and lots of the reading that is very nostalgic. Lots and lots of the um, routines in it are very reminiscent to my own childhood in the 60s and early 70s. Um, there's a poem called Mrs. Tilcher's Class by Caroline Duffy, which is really worth reading. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to read them, and it's, it does have, um, it may not be suitable for children, so although it's very nostalgic, um, it's perhaps best I don't read it, but Google it and have a read of it. It's very, very. Great. That also talks about milk, if I remember rightly, and the smell of the classroom. And there's a really good book. I love this book. It's actually an anthology of three different books, this one. But the first one is called The Fib by George, George Layton. And the first, the first, the, the Fib itself, the very short book is about that long. And um, a different, each chapter is about a different part of the year in his school year. He's in um, 11 year old boy coming up to 10, 11 year old boy coming up to um, the test that's the name of which has just gone out of my head. 11 plus, there you go. Coming up to his 11 plus, and it's funny things that happen to him in school with his mates in, um, in a school up in Lancashire. And very funny indeed, very funny really stories in that so and reading that again is very nostalgic lots of the classroom routine from my childhood is no longer relevant so what i was going to get you to do um next kind of um with a flavor of caroline duffy's mrs tilch's class and bits of the fib is to create a school photograph with words a snapshot of a classroom that you worked in so you can choose any age group, any school that you like, any age group that you are. I will probably do infant school. I think I'll stick with that and use some of the ideas that I've already created. And I'm going to write about, I'm going to ask you to write about, you sitting at a table at a particular point in a class of your choice and writing a snapshot with words about a short space of time in that classroom so you might want to decide what topic it is what age you are who your teacher is who the teacher is in that classroom what you can see around you who's sitting with you did you have particular friends that you remember uh, what activity are you doing it might be um woodwork that might be a woodwork lesson or it might be a craft lesson it might be English or maths, it might be a, a topic you love or one that you struggle with. It could be the end of the day, listening to stories, um, the boy next to you falling asleep with his head on the desk. or um, So yeah, just uh, I'm going to make it slightly longer. I'm going to go for 12, 10 minutes and then two minutes round up at the end. Writing about you sitting at a desk in a school um sights sounds smells you might want to think perhaps of some of the things that would be different in a classroom now and highlight those so that they're um setting stone in your bit of writing for for um posterity's sake like the milk that children you largely don't have now only a handful of children have it and if you don't want to write memory create a story about a character sitting at a desk and the sights and sounds around them um, not a whole story, just a snapshot, maybe something leading up to something that may happen next if you're doing a story. Or a poem. So I hope that's all right. Write a snapshot of you 
or a character sitting in a classroom, what's around them, what's going on around them. Just um, 10 minutes slot, and I'm going to start the timer now. If you want to type anything into the comments, feel free. And I will see you, see you on the other side. 10 minutes. Thanks for joining us, Vivian. I hope you catch us up later. Enjoy our trip to school. <laughs>
Okay, that was ten minutes. I'll just give you a minute. A minute to finish off the bit that you're on. Okay. Okay, so I finished mine. I hope you enjoyed that. It's quite hard to write. Two thirty in the afternoon on a on a foggy day. I'm going to read it to you. So it will be a bit rough. There's one or two words that I just could not think what they needed, what what, they, what I needed them to be. I'll have to go back over this later on and tidy up. But as I always say, it's just the first draft. It's a quick first draft. It doesn't need to be perfect. I've got most of the stuff here that can be worked on and improved later on. So I've done used some of the bits from my list and created a scene. Definitely need some adding to it. Anyway, let's get on with it. Sit up ready. Sit up ready with feet and hands together, children. Miss Hopkins' clear voice rings around the classroom. And there's the violent growl of chair legs as the class of 25 five-year-olds obey her command, pulling chairs further under the smooth edged tables, tucking feet beneath the seats and clasping our hot, sweaty hands together on the tabletops. She waits for the noise to subside, eyes scanning the room. And when it does, picks up the book we're all, we've all been waiting to hear. Charlotte's Web. What, we wonder, will happen to Wilbur the pig now? Is it Wilbur the pig? We sit and listen, entranced as the late afternoon sunshine shines through the large picture window behind Miss Hopkins' desk, lighting her golden hair like a halo and casting shadows on the chalkboard to the side. Beside me, Wendy Smith has put her thumb in her mouth and across the table, Christopher West rests his head on the tabletop. In his seat by the back wall, far out of Miss Hopkins' eye line, Simon Brown is flicking the crest seeds we turned earlier in the day, flicking their leaves with grubby fingers, a bit of repetition. Miss, Jonathan Smith suddenly shouts, I can see my mum outside. So there you go. Definitely some repetition in there and a bit rough, but it did capture that moment on a very hot, sweaty day. And then an infant classroom that had picture windows on both sides and was very, very hot. And the little boy next to me fell asleep. I didn't manage to get that in, but 
If you've got a little bit you want to type in into the comments, I'd love to see it. I hope you managed to find something useful from that. Okay, we've got 20 minutes. We might just have time. Then... Oh, activity two. Oh, here we go. D. D team. First day at school. First meeting with the teacher and the class. We all sat in a semicircle on the little grey plastic chairs made for little dodders like me. The class teacher showed us how to do the one little bird trick with our fingers and I was amazed. I would show mum and dad that one later. Then Mrs Douthwaite with her massive intimidating beehive was doing, oh, dolling out, sorry, my, dolling out bright yellow badges with our names on. She gave one to each child and said, welcome name to everyone. Then she came, great beginning, I love that. Yeah, Miss Hopkins had a beehive and that would have been clever to have put that in because it would have set the time of the piece I was writing. Good idea, good idea to put that little detail in there, DT. Hello Maria, we're just, um, we're writing bits about school and we're just about to start on the third activity. So I will um, say what that is. You can always replay the video to get activity. The two activities we've already done, we'll do those later. Just basically drawing on memories of school days. So I said about the fib. The fib by George, George Clayton has got some very funny stories. And in one of them, he's stolen a balaclava from a friend. And, and then in order not to get found out about it, he has to dispose of it before anybody, but anybody um, finds him. And the fact that it's a balaclava, um, most people don't know what they are nowadays. If you read it to children, you have to explain to them. It's, um, it's a great um, device for setting that in the time that George Clayton, Layton, George Layton grew up in. But um, focusing on the funny, funny stories in school. Have you got any funny stories that you remember from your time at school? Um, so there's funny stories about supply teachers being in. When there's a, a, another a book, there's a set of poems by, his name's gone, Alan Alberg, called Please Mrs Butler. And that's got a very, very funny poem in, Call Please Mrs Butler, where the children are asking the supply teacher, telling her that people are being naughty and she's ignoring them. Um, so any supply teacher stories when children mess the supply teacher about and, and lie about where things are. We had, um, when I was at secondary school, we had a set of identical twins who uh, were in our form, but had separate uh, subject lessons. Some of them were the same, but some of them were different. And they decided to swap place for the day. And the teach none of the teachers knew. We all knew because we could tell the difference. And that was a very funny day indeed. The day the identical twins swapped places. My brothers used to come home. I have older brothers who were always messing about at school <laughs> and um, being cheeky to the teachers apparently. And my maiden name was Horn. So one of the stories is the teacher said to my brother, what's the matter, Horn? And he said, it's a mountain, sir. So there you go. Have you got any funny stories from school? So have a good think. And if you can't think of one that's a true story, make one up. A funny story or something that happened to you at school, any age you like. Say so that. Well, um, let's do, what have we got, 12 minutes. I'm going to do 12 minutes because I end up giving you 12 minutes and I put the ticking clock on for 12 minutes. And off you go with a funny story from school.
I should add, if you don't want to write a whole story, you could just write a list of funny incidents in school and work on them later, if you wish.
Okay, just finish the piece that you're on. Okay, so I'm, I'm, it was hard to get going there. Let's see, I was writing a bit about, let's see if I've got time to share mine, let's have a look. Maria Harvey, it was nearing our end of year exams and the pressure was getting to a lot of us. The stress of cramming for exams was looming over us all and tempers were running high. That was when one of our teachers took it upon himself to motivate us in a creative way. His name was Mr. Cutty, and he was the, uncan was the uncanny spitting image of a famous character from a TV show called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Carlton. He declared to us all one fine assembly morning that if we did well and helped each other... Oh, that's a great beginning, Maria. I'd love to see the rest of that. Hopefully he motivated you to get through the exam. DT, when the whole class did the I'm Spartacus thing, when the teacher wanted to know... <laughs> Ah, who had drawn the rude image on the chalkboard. <laughs> that must have been funny. The supply teacher, in attempts to control the class, decided to show us... Ooh. Decided to show us how women had babies by getting onto the front desk and lying down in the I'm having a baby position with sound effects. Oh, dear. I remember our science teacher drawing the illustrations on the board. I was in a, a girl's secondary at that point. And him saying, yes, yes, laugh now. One big laugh and let's get it out of the way. Move on. <laughs> uh, I'll read mine very quickly. Again, still rough. <clears throat> at the age of six, I was a very sensitive child, picky about what I ate, oversensitive to noise, and easily put off by the table manners of the other children on our dinner table such that Tracy eating with her mouth open pushed me to the edge and the boy tipping the water from his beaker back into the water jug complete with particles of food sent me over it. I cried and wailed and refused to go to school and my parents reluctantly agreed I could make the long walk home down the hill every lunchtime. My dad came home on his moped for a cooked dinner anyway so it was no big deal. Unfortunately, as well as being sensitive, I was also a dawdler and a bit of a dreamer. There were caterpillars to be found in the hawthorn hedges that bordered the school field and a small copse of oak trees half down the old railway embankment halfway down. And I had this thing where I thought I was Debbie Reynolds. Hence me stopping in the copse one day, leaning against an oak tree and singing at the top of my lungs, about carousels and storms or showboats. Suddenly a small head peered round the oak tree and a boy I'd never seen before sneered, what you doing? I was very red faced, even more so when my dad turned up on his moped. There you go. Alrighty, well that's it. We're nearly, time's nearly up. I think I should get something useful out of that. Um, uh, thanks Maria I hope you enjoyed it um, yeah oh, yeah I didn't get to, as usual I've over planned I've got several different activities I didn't get to and pieces I didn't read out to you um, but if I'll try and get them up on my website by the end of the week www.alisonmott.com I put them up as a blog so um, yeah maybe the weekend by the time they're up there but 
uh, yeah, go back to the pieces that you've done, expand them in any way that you like. Maybe look at the list that you created and see how many different stories of school days you can get. And that's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me today. Bye.